Hi ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to 12.1, which is entitled Heat and Temperature. Uh, thermodynamics is my favorite chapter of the entire physics journey, and I hope that you end up with great gaining and appreciation for it too. Um, it's interesting that this first unit is called Heat and Temperature, because we often maybe confuse the two or think that they're the same thing, that if I heat something, its temperature goes up, or I'm hot, therefore I have a high temperature. Heat in the physics sense is a lot different than temperature, and I wanted to start us off just watching a quick video about what temperature is. Here's a nice cup of hot tea. And here's a glass of the same tea, except it's ice cold. So what's the difference? Well, one is hot and one is cold. In other words, they have a different temperature. To understand what temperature is, we need to imagine the tiny particles that the hot tea is made of. Let's pretend. ball represents one of those tiny particles, an atom. Imagine all the different atoms and groups of atoms, called molecules, that make up the tea. They're all jiggling and vibrating. Now, what if we use our imagination again to look at the atoms of the cold tea? They're not jiggling nearly as much. And that's what temperature is, the jiggling, vibrating motion of atoms. These jiggly little movements are much too small to see with our eyes but they produce a sensation that we can feel. When you touch something hot, rapidly vibrating atoms transfer some of their energy to your skin, making your atoms jiggle more. And that feels hot. The same thing happens when you touch something cold, but in reverse. Your atoms transfer away a portion of their jiggly energy, creating a feeling of cold. And that's a little bit about jiggling atoms, I mean, temperature to think about. A couple of important things that they talk about. That temperature is how much those atoms jiggle. Now if we went back, when I go back to right here, there is a, the hot coffee has a very high temperature. That movement of energy, like when the, the molecules of the hot coffee start running into and knocking around the molecules of your hand warming them up, that transfer of energy is called heat. Heat always goes from hot to cold, naturally. We can go the other way, but we have to put work into the system, and we'll get to that in part three. But know that it goes naturally from hot to cold. Making you your here, atoms hot jiggle more. To your hand. And that feels hot. And he's going to go the same put the thing hand on the other when way. You touch something cold, now it's going to go reverse. from your hand your atoms transfer away a portion of their jiggly the energy, cold creating tea. a feeling of cold. So it will, that's heat movement. I wanted to show you a couple other, um, this is just kind of an animation that just went through that they talked about. Something really cold versus something really hot. The molecules are moving around very quickly. Um, now, and temperature doesn't mean that every molecule in that entire system is moving at the same speed. This is kind of an animation that shows that there are some molecules moving a lot faster, some moving a lot s slower. Temperature is an average. It's an average of the whole thing. And then also, maybe you learn this in chemistry, that when you start changing the volume and pressure of a, of a gas, you start affecting temperature. And this kind of shows you how temperature, volume, and pressure are, are all related. The higher the temperature something is, the faster and harder it bangs against the walls and everything and makes a larger pressure. So let's, let's go through some of our definitions here. The first definition that I want to talk about is thermodynamics. And thermodynamics means the, the study of heat transformation. Because the word thermo, thermo means heat. Dynamics means movement. So the study of how heat moves. 
Um, there's three different uh, temperature scales that we use. Um, temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of the particles in an object. And you saw that in that animation where you have all these things moving around, they have kinetic energy. It's the average kinetic energy of all those particles. Um, the three scales that we use, that we use, there's, there's a few more actually. Uh, the Kelvin scale, it's based on absolute zero. So if you were to take those motion, those molecules, and you slowed them down to where they physically stopped, we call that absolute zero. And we can never make them perfectly stop. You can get really close to, but you can never get to absolute zero. The Celsius scale. The Celsius scale is based on the boiling and freezing point of water. At 100 degrees Celsius, water boils. At 0 degrees Celsius, water freezes. The Fahrenheit scale. Um, it's unknown where it came from, but it's interesting to note that it's 180 degrees away from one another where water freezes and water boils. I don't know if that has anything to do with it. Who knows? There's a lot of theory and folklore that goes into the Fahrenheit scale. I have to go back and forth from Celsius that we'll be using primarily Celsius and Kelvin. There's also a fourth scale. It's called the Rankin scale. It's basically the Fahrenheit scale, except zero Rankin is, is zero Kelvin. It's also interesting to note that you'll notice that there's no degree symbol in front of Kelvin because zero Kelvin means that there, it's an absolute scale, that there's no movement. So there's no, no such thing as negative one Kelvin because you can't get any stiller than zero. So all the other them of the, deg the degrees Celsius, degrees Fahrenheit, degrees Rankin, those all have that little circle thing, but Kelvin does not. Now to go back and forth between Celsius and Kelvin, we're just going to add or subtract 273. So you take your temperature in Celsius, add 273, and that will give you your temperature in Kelvin. Um, thermal equilibrium. It's a state in which energy flow between two objects is equal and then they have the same temperature. So energy is done flowing between the two objects. The hotter one is given all of its energy well enough to where it can't get any more over here and we have what's called equilibrium and they end up at the same temperature. Um, heat. We talked about thermodynamics as the ways that heat moves. There are three primary ways that heat goes from one place to another. The first is conduction. Conduction is where they come in direct contact, like that person's hand touching the hot coffee or the cold uh, iced tea touching their hand, where the physical molecules of your body are physically interacting and hitting them with, through conservation of momentum to heat something up, to raise its temperature. The second one is convection. Convection is where hot things rise, which in turn push the cold things down, and you get this flow, this upward, it's called a convection current. And it's, it happens in fluids, and it could be in a gas, and it could be in a, in a liquid. And then lastly, radiation. Um, we feel the warm sun, not because we're touching it, and not because there's, there's fluid moving between us, but convection, it's radiation. Like you feel like a fire from a long ways away, like you can physically feel that on your hands and when you look at on your face, that's called radiation. It's transfer via electromagnetic waves. You don't need any matter, it can go through space. And it travels at the speed of light, it's actually the fastest one. So probably slowest to fastest, slowest conduction, convection being a little bit quicker. Radiation, it travels at the ultimate speed limit, which is the speed of light, three times 10 to the eighth meters per second. Now, um, Different entities are able to absorb and take heat more readily, and we call this specific heat. Specific heat is the amount of energy that must be added to a material to raise one kilogram of it up one degree Kelvin. And it's interesting to also note that going up one degree Kelvin is the exact same thing as going up one degree Celsius. One degree Kelvin is completely different than one degree Celsius, the temperature scale, but the span, they are equal to going up one degree Celsius and going up one degree Kelvin are the exact same thing. So sometimes you'll see specific heat as joules per kilogram per degree Celsius, and it doesn't, that's okay, it's the same thing. So if you look at this, 
the biggest one, if you look at this list, is water. It takes a lot of energy to heat one kilogram of water up one degree Celsius or Kelvin. That's why they're a huge energy suck in your house. If you have, if you have a, tank, a water heater that's got a tank in it, you're paying to, ha to heat that all day. That's the, the new wave of energy saving is tankless water heaters, where you heat the water right when you need it and you don't store any when you don't need it. Uh, the easiest thing on this list to heat is going to be, looks like lead, down to 130. It's, it's literally 40 times easier to heat one kilogram of lead up one degree Celsius than it is water. And so uh, the first equation that we're going to have in this new semester is heat transfer. Q stands for heat. M stands for mass. C stands for specific heat. And delta T is your change in temperature. Now, remember, mass has to be in, we're going to have to put it in kilograms. Heat is going to be in joules. Specific heat is going to be joules per kilogram per degree Kelvin or degree Celsius. And change in temperature can be Celsius or Kelvin. So here's, where, here's our first example. And I'm going to transfer over to my smart notebook file here. It says a cast iron skillet. We use it on the stove. Um, how much heat do you have to be transferred to the iron to raise its temperature from 295 to 450. So we're, it's a direct application of this equation. Q equals MC delta T. How much heat? We don't know. The mass, 5.10 kilograms. The specific heat. The specific heat, we have to look up on that chart. Um, so we'll go back. Um, we'll look up iron, and the specific heat of iron you'll see is 450. So, 450. The change in temperature, remember the te it's the final temperature minus your initial temperature. The final temperature, 450. The initial temperature, 295. So this is a very straightforward question. It's just going to require your calculator to plug in a few numbers here. So 5.1 times 450 times uh, 450 minus 295. It comes out to 356,000 joules. which we will, it's easier to write 356 kilojoules. Now, if you wanted to figure out how much time does it take, then we're going to get into power, like watts, how many joules can you transfer per, per second. And then you get into efficiency, like how much, how efficient is that? Is 50% of everything that you put into it actually go into heating the iron? But, so this is kind of the start. Uh, the next place that we're going to go is let's see um, measuring specific heat. Now, measuring specific heat. Actually, I think that I'm going to cut off right here. I'm going to save this for another another lecture. So this, this is where I'm going to cut off right now because I want to give this a little bit of time too. Part two is going to be what if you mix two things thermodynamically? You pour something hot into something cold. That's what you're going to see here. Where does that go? So here's where I'm going to leave off for today.